Hello everyone. Today we're going to be working on the windows, um, more specifically the window stools. So the outside of the window, the bottom is called the sill, the inside is called the stool. Um, I'm probably going to refer to it as a sill or a stool. Some people even say apron, but that's kind of the trim piece that goes underneath the stool. So anyway, working on the window stool today. Now, this was a cased opening um, sheetrock, so you can see the sheetrock goes up to the window on the inside and on the top, but on the bottom they wanted to do sheetrock and I told them just to leave it blank because I was going to do either uh, a stained wood stool or a painted stool. The other thing I need to do is add blinds, but um, that's pretty easy. So let's get into how I make this wood base plate. The first thing you're going to do is measure it. So the first thing I do is I make a little drawing of it and you can see it's essentially the cutout that we're going to be making. and I measure here to here, so we're looking at 26 and 3 quarters. It's okay if it's a little bit loose because we're going to caulk around the edge. And so this measurement is 26 and 3 quarter. And now I like to make this wing an inch and this wing an inch. So we know this is going to be 2 inches longer, so 28 and 3 quarter inch. And now we need to measure this length there. So on this window, we're just over four and a quarter. So again, we're going to make it four and a quarter, and we'll have a, maybe an eighth inch gap back here. So this measurement, four and one quarter inch. Again, I like to make this one inch, so we know that this overall measurement is going to be five and one quarter inch. So there we go. We have our four measurements that we need. So I'm doing five windows, so I measured them all out, and now I can go out and cut them all at the same time. One tip, if you're doing multiple windows, you need to mark which one is which, right? I measured five windows. Um, this is gonna be A. So somewhere mark A, B, C, one, two, three, four, and then on the piece of wood, when you cut it, A, B, C. Okay, so we've measured the length and we have that cut. Now I'm going to cut the width. Um, again, we want to cut the longest width. And so for this A piece of board, we need five and a quarter. Okay, so this is our A board at five and a quarter width and 28 and three quarter length. So now I'll show you how to do the notches and cut those out. So we're going to be marking on the back of the piece of wood and the reason why is when you mark with your pencil sometimes you'll see the indentations um, whether it's paint or stain so it's just easier to mark on the back. One thing you want to be aware of is uh, if you have a front and back on the piece of the wood. So the front is pretty smooth, the back you can see some of the saw marks. So this is going to be our back and uh, with that we can make our cutout. So if you remember I had about an inch lip here and then it was about an inch cut out here. And one of the nice things about having it be one inch is my combo square here. This is one inch. And so I can just line this up with this edge. Draw that. Line it up with this edge. Draw that. And there's my cutout. So there's a few different ways that you can cut out the uh, little notch. Um, tried and true, the handsaw. Next best option is jigsaw. Um, and this is what I'm going to be using mostly. Now, you can start the cut with the table saw, but you're not going to be able to make the full cut because the blade is a circle, and so you're not going to be able to cut a 90 degree edge. If you try to go all the way to 90 degrees, the circle blade is going to continue past your cut. And if it's on the bottom side, not a big deal. If it's on the top side, obviously a big deal. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I have my scrap piece of wood here with a one inch and a one inch, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, 
So, we've made our cut. From this side, it looks great. From the front, you start to notice, oh, you can see a little notch there. And then, if you remember, my pencil mark was on the bottom, so if I flip this over, this is gonna be the top. So, that is why you can't use the table saw to do the full cut. If you want to start and maybe do about halfway, that's what I do, and then I do the rest with the jigsaw. I'll show you exactly what I do with that. So you can see from the bottom, I cut all the way to there, and I only cut maybe one inch in. Now you flip it over, this is my top side, the one inch is basically all the way cut, and then this, I can finish up with the jigsaw. So, there you go. I'll cut this side out. That'll be our first window stool. So normally when you're cutting this with a jigsaw, you'd want to clamp this down, but for video's sake, just did it real quick, and it's pretty easy to hold, so I wasn't too worried about it. Now if you're cutting with the handsaw, you're definitely going to have to clamp it down, so um, note number two. Board number two. So, I don't know if using the table saw to make that little cut saves any time. Um, maybe, maybe not. But uh, it's the way I do it, or the way I was taught. Um, so let me know if I'm doing it wrong. Um, again, I don't do this every day. This is uh, kind of after work and for fun and to save a little money. So if I'm doing something wrong, point it out. I won't take offense, thanks. All right, so we have all the boards cut. They have the notches. And now the next step is I need to round the edge. So right now it's a sharp 90 degree edge. If you caught uh, your pant leg on this corner, it's not gonna be great. Or if you have little kids, they run into that. Um, not a good thing. So a couple different ways we can do this. The old school method of uh, taking sandpaper and just running along the edge and then sanding the top. Um, we could do that, you could do it with a power sander, or if you have a router um, with the right bit, you can round the corner uh, really easy. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. With the router, I always use a sample or a test piece first, because if you just start right on this and screw it up, um, you might have to recut a piece, or you're going to have a weird uh, cut in where the router bit was set too deep or something. So. Always use a test piece if you have it, and with the router, you definitely want to clamp this piece down. Not sure if you're able to see that, but we just took that edge and we routed it down, and it's a nice, smooth edge. So I'm going to do that to the side and the front, then I'll flip it over and I'll do the bottom so it'll be a total round edge. Okay, so we have the front edge and the corners rounded over, and so now we just need to get them ready for paint. And so I'm just going to be using a rotary sander as a first uh, sand, and then I'll use a flat or palm sander um, to get that final coat. Since we're painting it, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's not a stain, it's not as critical, but yeah, quick sand, get it smooth, get it right, and then uh, primer and paint. So we only need to sand the top and the little sides here in the front. Um, that's all we're going to be seeing, that's all we're going to be painting. The bottom we're not going to really touch. Um, so yeah, quick and easy.
Next step before we paint is to clean off all the dust. So if you have an air compressor, that saves a lot of time. And then you go back with a wet rag, or you can just do a rag. But uh, yeah, got to get all the dust off before we paint. So we got all the pieces cleaned off. The next step is the paint. Um, I'm going to be using a little paint tray, a little roller, and a brush for the edges. One little tip when you're using the paint tray, if you get all the paint in there, sometimes it's a pain to clean out. So if you take a grocery bag, instead of buying the liners, you gotta put it in there, put the paint right in there. Um, what's nice about that is between coats, you just leave that in there, kind of wrap it up, and the paint will stay for, I've used it for a couple days. Um, so, little tip, hopefully it works. Now, since we're painting raw wood, we want to use a primer or a primer paint combo. Um, it's probably going to take three coats, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first coat's on. I'm probably going to wash the brush and not use it. The small roller works great for the edges and the sides, um, so I don't want to deal with brush strokes. Um, I like the little dimples that this leaves. It's kind of a, a uniform finish. Um, and then once I sand it and do that final coat, it'll turn out pretty good. So yeah, don't worry about the first coat being perfect. Um, it's really kind of get that uh, paint embedded in the wood and start to make a uniform layer and a smooth layer. So first coat's done, we'll let that dry for, uh, I think two hours, whatever the time is on the paint. And uh, then we'll get going on the second coat. Okay, so all our pieces are cut, uh, three coats of paint ready to install. So you can see it's not a super, super tight fit. Um, there's a little bit of gap here, a little bit of gap over here. So I wanna kind of center that gap. And um, if you're really precise with your measurements, you can get that really tight. But since these are white, I'm gonna use a white caulk, it's gonna blend right in. You're not even going to really notice this gap. A couple different ways to secure this. You could use construction adhesive and glue it down, or a nail, the nail gun, hand nail, or some screws. All right, so we have it secured. Now we can fill in the nail holes with some putty, caulk the edges, do a final touch-up coat of paint, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we are done with the window stools. Um, got caulk underneath, caulk on the sides, on the back. Uh, looks good, got the blinds installed. And yeah, it's just a nice setup. I'm very happy with it. So with the cased opening done in sheetrock and finished, and the piece of wood, um, whether it's painted or stained, uh, this looks really good for this bottom plate. So in the master bedroom you can see we did the same thing for the window stools. We measured them out, we cut them. The only difference is I stained these ones. I wanted to match the wood floors, the wood door, the wood furniture that we have in the bedroom. And so we went with the wood stain. But I just want to show you that it can look good in a wood stain or in a paint. So anyway, that's it. Hopefully you learned something today. Um, something helpful. Maybe not. Please uh, comment, share, subscribe, and let me know. Share your feedback. Thanks.